Hello, so you're watching this on the Go Humberto channel and you're probably watching this if you've got a Dometic tech tower in your motorhome. So let me just, does that look familiar? So I've got a fridge down here, freezer, and in this case an oven. And you're probably watching this because you've got the same problem as me, that the door seized up and you got some new hinges. I've seen quite a bit on YouTube and on various forums about accessing the hinges and taking out the the tech tower. So people are saying take out the tech tower so you can access the hinges. You don't need to do that. Uh, these hinges, uh, the worst thing is they're very expensive. They're about £90 a pair. They come as a pair if you can find them. I managed to get these for about £60. Still ridiculous. Uh, trade price for some reason, so I got lucky there. Lucky, sixty pounds for two of these. Um, but they're buried inside the oven door. There's a, there's two pieces of glass all screwed together to give an air gap, and these live in the air gap. But to get them out isn't such a big deal. So let me just turn the camera around one second. Okay, so we're looking inside the oven. I've got a light going on. The the oven doors in various pieces around the motorhome, yeah, I had to really take that into its kind of basic parts to get inside the two panes of glass. But to access the hinges, let me just put this new one in. Uh, you can see it's just, okay, so you can see there are two screws, Torx bolt screws. You undo those once you can access those uh, screws in the hinge, and then it, they just pull out. So I'm hoping that to fit these, I just need to get in there, put this in, put the screws in, lock that into place. There, goes better. You can see the whole the hinge actually the the lug. This is a solid lug, which the hinge pivots on. Uh, I'm hoping that I can just put this in and then uh, reassemble the oven door parts around it. What I have done is I've got some. You can't really see. You can see some sort of maybe some brown colour in there, you can see it on my fingers, it's greased. So I bought some high temperature grease, three in one spray grease, and that's good to 1100 degrees because these things come dry and I can see from the old ones that I took out that in these channels here it's worn a, a slot here and it all kind of wears out on this bearing here. So I've bought, you can just see it shining there inside, that's uh, copper grease. It's, you know, it's three in one copper grease, high temperature. It's about five pounds a tin. I've used about a, a millionth of what's in the tin, but it's a useful grease, I guess. So I'm hoping that gives it some longevity and also stops it from creaking and groaning, which the old one did. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start on the assembly process, starting with fitting the hinges. Okay, so hopefully see you later in the process. Okay, so they're both fitted. There's the one on the other side. What I've also done is I've... The plan is to replace these original Torx bolts. These are T25 Torx. Uh, with these M4, I think they're M4 Allen bolts. Just makes it easier when it comes to putting the oven door back on. Um, my Torx driver, I'm kind of using this Torx driver. Well, it's an interchangeable bits, but I've got, I've got a T25 Torx bit in there. And at some point I've got to bolt this glass holder into there via the oven door. I'll try and explain better when it comes to that. But if these Allen bolts fit, and I don't see why they shouldn't, I've put some spring washers on here as well. They should be fine. It just means that these holes should be more accessible to an Allen key than to my Torx driver, which doesn't fit through there. So I'm hoping that I can use one of my many Allen keys to kind of secure those and Allen bolts 
I prefer those. I prefer these more substantial than the Torx bolts. So I'll leave those in. Okay, so they're in. Uh, they're a hell of a sort of operating pressure, but well, <laughs> there's no noise. There's no creaking anymore, which is great. They're tightened in. Horrible hinges, especially for the, the money I paid for them. But hopefully they'll last for a few more years. Now to figure out the jigsaw of oven door parts I took off. It came apart easily. I doubt whether it's going to go on quite so gracefully. So bear with me and see you in a while. Okay, now the hinges are secured. Here and here. Next thing is to slot this curved piece over. This is your last chance to do this because it's it's got a slot here and that slots over the lug on the hinge. Once we start bolting things together then you don't get a chance to uh, slot this over so make sure this is on first and then we're going to put the glass clamps on with some allen keys. I, re I replaced the torque screws with some allen bolts which I prefer so these, let me just back up, these are the glass clamps and then hopefully the oven door can slide on bolt to this plate but uh, let's see so back in a few minutes of swearing I'll cut out the swearing uh, see you soon okay just a quick shot here you can see now I've replaced the the Torx bolts with some M4 Allen bolts I've got in the garage and these are the glass clamps you can see I think I've got this the right way around you know we'll soon see I'm sure this is uh, the right way up. Uh, there's a yeah. So this screws. It's all screws to the oven door. Uh, I think that's the track. You can see this L. And the glass slides in there. The the rear glass. And you'll soon see if it doesn't. Then we'll just take it out again. But. Uh, replacing the the Torx bolts with Allen bolts is a great idea in my opinion if you've got them. I can't stand Torx bolts. Uh, anyway, let me try and get the oven door attached to all this now. See you later. Okay, another step completed. We've slid the glass in. So if you look inside here, you can see that these strips we fastened on to the hinges before, clamp the glass. So the best way to do this is to loosen everything off, loosen the allen bolts inside the hinge, put ones of the self tappers in here loosely so you get some gap here and then you can slide the plate of glass in. Same at the other side. Let me show you underneath. So we have a self tapper here and at the other side of the self tapper. Once you've slid the glass in, tighten those down slightly but you can see underneath we've got a whole load of other self tappers to go in and they, those self tappers, if you can see in here, those are the self tappers clamp this glass clamp to the hinge assembly if that makes sense. Once that's done then with the aid of more self tappers we have this kind of end panel which sits on here and is held in place by more cheesy horrible self tappers so uh, the hinges everything's loose right now all the bolts holding the hinge to the glass clamp are loose the torx bolts here holding the lug the hinge lug they're loose because it really is that's kind of a I don't know, it's kind of cheesy fit finish. So once it's all in and it seems okay, I'm going to start clamping things down very slowly. But for now, uh, it's going, touch wood, it's going together okay. It's kind of self explanatory really. But anyway, uh, let me put a few more self tappers in, see if I can get it all clamped down, and then we'll see if the hinges work without snapping. See you later. Okay, so the glass is clamped down. I'm going to give you, let's take one last look inside here so you can actually see 
how this thing works. It might be useful to know how this thing looks inside. There we go. You can see the hinge, the glass clamp, how that's allen bolted to the hinge. And then the whole assembly is then screwed with self-tappers into the glass clamp itself. You can see all those self-tappers poking through. So the last thing to go on is this cover plate, the curved cover plate at the end, again with some self-tappers. But you can see there's no reason to take out the tech towel. All you need to do is basically take this curved cover plate off and you can see how the whole thing works. It's all blurred, one sec. Okay. And then once you can see inside, you can then hopefully see how the whole thing comes apart. And it's just a reverse of taking it apart. It's very simple. Um, I'll say that I've not tested the hinges yet. I don't want to do that until the end plate is on and I've kind of tightened up, so loosely tightened the Torx bolts here. Because there's some play in that, so it might need just jigging around to get the thing set to get the gap or the gaps right. But onwards and upwards, let's put that cover plate on and then see if the hinges actually work. Okay, later. Okay, so finally, here we go. So everything's tightened up, all these self-tappers under here, the Torx bolts in here, and, uh, well, no creaking, no grinding, nice and quiet. <laughs> Makes me realize now how bad it was before. So, in summary, the first thing to do if you're replacing the hinges is take this curved cover plate off and it's just held on with these two self-tappers here, two self-tappers there. <clears throat> Once that comes off, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see inside how it all fits together. But hopefully that's been of some use. And no need to take the tech tower out, just the pain of paying for some very expensive hinges. Okay. Hope that was some help and goodbye YouTube.